I did mention to you guys at the, er, the beginning of the series that I'd only gotten so far in Update 4, and we've reached that point. So pretty much everything we do from this point forward is going to be uh, brand new to me. Welcome back, everybody, to Satisfactory. I'm an old guy gaming, and in this episode, we are going to change out our old bio generators to batteries to store power. Um, speaking of which, I have doubled the capacity of our coal plant. Um, let me, let's go take a quick look at that. And then uh, we're going to keep working on our roadway. And depending upon how time goes, uh, we might uh, actually get started with our advanced steel production uh, items. The two things we're going to we're going to make uh, set up a permanent installation for are the uh, in, in case industrial beams and the motors so anyway as you can see um, this was our original this side here was our original coal plant and um, I have now doubled it to this side so so I added eight more and what we did is or what I did rather is I upgraded all my miners to mark two miners so they're all now outputting uh, 120 coal per minute because those are all normal nodes and there's a total of four of them um, and then they're uh, all on mark 3 belts because the two of them together are 240 and the mark 3 belts uh, we have two separate lines there right and then the mark 3 belts are coming in until they get to the splitters and then once they get to the splitters then they change to mark 2s uh, and then continue feeding the line so basically uh, we have the same exact setup on this side and this side as we did over here. So, and then I changed all the catwalks up that we had before. And yeah, so we now have uh, 2,400 megawatts of power. I needed to do that because as you can see where the power currently is, it's consuming, it's actually just a little bit over 1,200 uh, max at the moment. And we were right at the limit. So I said, all right, well, it's time for us to uh, increase our power. And so I did, of course, all of that off camera. Uh, because it's you guys have already seen seen how it, it comes together. It's just mir basically mirrored on the other side Okay, so let's head on up and we're gonna start doing some stuff on the road uh, One thing I'm not sure about It's probably not this way, but it seems like when you go up at an angle in the hypertubes It's slower than when you go straight up vertically, but I'm not I don't know if that's actually true It's probably just seems that way because you're going up at an angle instead of straight up it's probably the same speed, but I don't know. It's just, it's it's kind of weird how that works. So, I'm just going to leave it the way it is for now anyways. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look and see what's happening with these batteries. So, what we're going to do is uh, we're going to remove the bio burners. I, I can't think of any reason at this point why I should keep these here. Uh, originally, I had kept them in place as a backup power source, but... I mean, we're, we're consuming way more power now than, than these could handle anyways. And I'd have to add more, and it doesn't seem to make sense to do that, especially since we have, you know, automated coal power. Uh, we still will need biofuel for certain things, you know, like the chainsaw and the Explorer and some other th things probably. Uh, so I'm going to keep the little biofuel factory going here. But these we're gonna we're gonna switch out and we're gonna put some batteries in their place that can then store power for us in case the power goes down. You know we have a little a backup for a temporary period of time. Okay, so let's start uh, by getting rid of all of this stuff. I might keep those power poles in place and reuse them. We'll see um, how how it comes together. I'm I'm not sure how large these batteries are either. So that's another thing we'll have to see once we get all this stuff uh, taken back down here. Okay, so that takes care of those. Now, uh, let's go into our power generation and get our power storage. Okay, so those are, those have the same footprint as the, uh, as the bio generators. They're a little higher, but I don't think that's a problem. Right, okay, cool, so we can keep these there. So we're gonna basically just put these um, right in the same spots as the bio generators were and then we'll take a look and see how they work in terms of you know their capacity and that sort of thing are those all lined up yeah they are 
if I put this one here, this was getting really tight. Yeah, I can still run through there. I mean, it is it is very tight though. The other thing I thought about maybe doing is running the batteries just all the way down along this row here, which is another possibility too. But let's get uh, let's get these in first, and then we'll we'll see what our capacity is. I mean, ideally, we should have enough of these to where um, you know they can they're equivalent to their storage is equivalent to the power we're generating now. But I don't know how practical that would be. Just making sure those are lined up correctly. Yeah, those fit quite nicely right in the tiles there. So let's get these in place. Okay, I think um, with these 12, if we look at this, um, it has 100 megawatts per hour of a charge. And there's 12 of them, so that's 1,200. So we, we have exactly half of what we would need. Um... I think it might make sense then for us to, this might not stay this way forever, but let's run, let's go ahead and run another 12 down, down through here. We have the room to do it. Um, so let's just get her done. And that way, you know, we, we have enough backup power to cover everything if our grid goes down. Now, eventually, you know, we're going to upgrade to to fuel-based power and increase our power and then at that point you know the we, we, we won't even we won't have enough batteries then either but for now let's let's just go ahead and go with the 24 so that way we know until that time comes you know we have enough to to cover our power needs for an hour <laughs> uh, if it goes down that's the other thing too um okay yeah so let's finish i'm gonna put 12 more of these in here Okay, so we got that done. Um, now, I just realized that we can actually daisy chain these batteries together, uh, so they don't they don't need individual power poles. Um, so that being the case, we don't need these. So let's get rid of these first, and then we'll figure out how the best way to connect this to the grid. We'll probably just run it right off the wall. Yeah, so let's do this. Let's go ahead and let's see. That's the connection there. So we're going to put a wall socket right here. And then let's run from you to you and from you to down here. Okay. And then what we should be able to do is go from here to here and from there to there. And then we can just basically chain these um, all the way down. Oh, wait a minute. Okay, so they can only have two per. Oh, I see. Okay. Um, then in that case... I guess what we'll do is we'll just do another wall socket. Hmm, I have to think about this for a second. I just realized too the the gauge is facing that direction. Uh no, that's okay though. I'm okay with that, I guess. I don't know. I might have done it differently if I would have noticed that, but I'm not gonna change it now. Um, so we can only have two on there. Yeah, I guess the simplest thing to do is just going to be to put one here, too. And then this connector here will run this line. Okay, let's get them all hooked up. 
All right, so all the batteries are now on the grid and they will take some time, of course, uh, to charge. Uh, but once they do, yeah, it tells us it's going to be about an hour and 45 minutes or so uh, for it to charge. Uh, then we will have 2,400 megawatts for an hour uh, if the main power grid goes down. Very cool. Okay. Very cool. We got that done. I've been wanting to do that for a while, too, but the uh, main reason I haven't done it until now is because we didn't have stater staters in, uh, uh, in quantity until just recently. So, cool. All right, you guys, let's go ahead and you know what? Let's look at, we haven't looked at any research or milestones for a while. Um, we want, I want to do oil processing, get that going. So we should have everything we need for this. Um, what is this? I think that's copper sheeting. Yeah, it is. Okay. Um, and so we need encased industrial beams. And we need 50 motors, which I have upstairs. So let's get that going first. We're not going to do anything uh, with oil yet until we're done with the steel, but we might as well at least get the milestone going. And we can start scanning for the oil to see where it is. So I think I may have showed you guys this in the last episode or two. I can't remember, um, but... I switched all this over. We had two assemblers here, uh, and I took one out, and then I changed this one over to to make motors. And you, as you can see, we have almost a full thing of motors, which is awesome. And I took all of the encased industrial beams that we were making and stored them in here. So we got a nice little supply of those until we get them, you know, the permanent production line going. Okay, so we got that done. Um, let's go back down and get, and get that milestone taken care of. And then we're going to start working on our road. We should actually look at the MAM too and see if there's any research we can do. Uh, at some point I need to get back out and do some more exploration so we can get um, some more al alternate recipes too. Okay, here we go. Oil processing. This is a huge step uh, up. Milestone reached. Oil acquisition and refining unlocked. Oil-based products can now be made. The byproducts of oil refinement can be used after further processing, as seen in the refinery. Caution. This is a reminder to minimize the chance of expiration during out-of-base activities. Okay. So, I have not... I haven't done anything with oil ever, actually, in this game. In fact, we're pretty much, guys, just so you guys know, uh, we're pretty much at the point where um, everything is going to be brand new to me, too. I, I did mention to you guys at the uh, beginning of the series that I'd only gotten so far in Update 4, and we've reached that point. So pretty much everything we do from this point forward is going to be uh, brand new to me, uh, which means... Uh, among other things, of course, that it's very exciting. I'm, I'm, I'm excited to do it, but it also means that, you know, I, I'm going to have to figure stuff out because, <laughs> you know, we haven't, uh, I haven't been, I haven't been this far before in this game. So I'm looking forward to it. The one thing I'll, I will tell you about Satisfactory, if you haven't already figured this out, is, you know, the further you advance, the more complicated it gets. It just, it, everything compounds exponentially uh, in terms of complication. Um, so, yeah, it's going to be an interesting step forward, you know, for all of us now in this series. I have been watching other YouTubers. Um, I'm Kibitz is a very popular, satisfactory YouTuber. Um, I, I like him. I like Nila, uh, Nilaus. And, you know, I've watched a few others, too. Um, and, you know, just by watching them, I can tell that, oh, man, this this game gets more and more complicated. But that's part of the challenge and part of the fun of it, too. And I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Um, but I just want you guys to know know that because, um, you know, it's good. things are going to be brand new for me. Now, those of you who are watching this series and are veterans of this game, um, certainly, you know, I certainly welcome, as I always have, you know, tips and tricks and that sort of thing, too, as we move forward. Uh, but things just get bigger, more complicated. Uh, oil is, is amazingly uh, versatile, I guess is the word, because... 
you can use it for many things. So, you know, you, you take the crude oil and then you, from the crude oil you make um, products such as plastic and rubber, for example. But then there's a byproduct uh, from that and you take the byproduct and then you can make fuel, um, you know, different types of fuel, that sort of thing. So uh, it's pretty interesting how it all comes together and we'll, we'll definitely be in, uh, exploring that and figuring it out together. Okay, but we're not quite there yet. Um, we have two more big production lines that we have to set up, but before we do that, we got to get the road going because uh, I'm going to use trucks, or more specifically tractors, because we don't have trucks yet, to take the place of the conveyor belts to bring the coal over that we need for these last two uh, advanced steel production lines that we're going to do. Okay, so I've laid the foundations for the road. Um, so we have two major goals here. We want to set up the actual, finish setting up the road, uh, both in terms of uh, dividers and uh, aesthetics, you know, making it look like a road, putting some lighting in, and also setting up the truck stations uh, and getting that part going. Um, so we, we probably, we won't be building the actual assembly lines today, but we're going to get the road, the infrastructure for it uh, set up uh, for coal. Uh, now, iron, which is the other thing we need for steel, I've already done uh, some updating. Let's look at that real quick first before we get started with the road in earnest here. Um, what, what I've basically done with the iron is I've upgraded all of our miners to Mark IIs. Uh, no, I don't want to use the hypertubes for this. And kind of switch things around a little bit. So, so that that's ready to go. So essentially, what I've done is all of the miners down here are now Mark II miners. Okay, these two are offline at the moment because these two we're together we're going to use for our two advanced steel production lines. Um, so, but each one of them is going to output uh, 240. So we're going to have 480 iron coming in, and we're going to have 480 coal coming in from our truck line once we get it set up, which is actually quite a bit more than what we're gonna need at least at first. Um, so yeah, we'll see how that goes. And then everything that previously was running off of um, all four of these miners, you know, previously, like I said, is now running off of these two miners. So this Mark II um, is sending all the iron to our original production lines, which before that, it was this one and this one together. Uh, now I've merged everything onto just this one. So this is handling all of our basic iron production that we started with. This one is handling our basic steel production. So, you know, making the steel beams and the steel pipes. Um, it, so that's what this one is doing. And then these two are going to handle the advanced steel production. Okay. So it's really handy, you know, that we're here in this spot and have those four pure nodes just right literally under the base to work with. Uh, it makes things easier. I also have upgraded the concrete uh, miner to a Mark II and have um, a conveyor ready to go for our permanent in-case industrial beams line that we're going to do, but, but I didn't take it any further than that at this point. Okay, anyway, let's get to the road. Let's get to it, man. Let's get to it. So, for the road, what we're going to do is... Uh, I think what we'll do is we'll, yeah, let's, let's get the, the road itself set up in terms of making it look like a road, getting the dividers in place, that sort of thing. And then what we'll do is we'll get the truck station set up and then we'll get the tractor, um, programmed. I think we only need one tractor for, for this line, at least initially, I think. I'm not 100% sure. We'll have to wait until we get it set up and let it run to see if the tractor is going to be able to handle it. Um, I did a little bit of testing off camera t to see, uh, you know, how it, how it might work. And it looked like it could probably support it, but I wasn't sure. And, and in the process of doing all that testing, I have a whole bunch of coal stored up that I just stuck in that box right there for now. Okay, so let's, let's do the road first. So what we're going to do is we're going to press the X key, go to the customizer, uh, and go to the materials. And we want the asphalt uh, foundation... Um, uh, patch or whatever the hell, however the hell you want to put that. And so basically, we can start with this. Yeah, we're just going to make all of this look like 
asphalt because this is all kind of part of the road this wider section here is where you know the the trucks will they'll come in the station's going to sit right here and then the trucks will come in offload and then they need a little bit of room of course to turn around and then head the other way uh, so let's get this done first and then we're going to be putting some dividers in and um, putting some lighting in too okay so we have the asphalt um, <clears throat> all down now all the way to the other end um, let's look at a couple of things here while we're on this end. So as you can see, I have two uh, Mark III coal lines coming down, ready to connect there. And onto the two uh, coal, uh, pure coal deposits that we have up here, I have placed two Mark II miners and set up power and all of that sort of thing. And we, we put those on... Uh, foundations too you know so they would line up of course with the grid at least laterally speaking and then we have a what in the world is that I don't know what that is <laughs> it's kind of weird uh, anyway we have um, it's almost like they they're painted with glyphs or something um, anyway yeah so we set up the lines on the on the pure coal nodes out this way we got that done. All right, let's head on back down to our our filling station. And we got Mark III coal lines running this way, going down those two elevators. Okay. So now what we want to do is I have, a, I have a few more of the railings to run way back over by the main base. Uh, but what we're going to do starting right here is we're going to put in uh, road barriers so let's make sure we're in uh, zoop mode and we want to turn this this way and start zooping some road barriers in and you know we're doing we're not only doing this for aesthetic reasons but we're actually doing it because if we do eventually get more than one vehicle running uh we want to make sure you know that they stay in their lane so they don't collide with one another even though the game's actually pretty good now about fixing that issue if it does happen um we still want to you know set it up so so that uh they each have their own lane basically and there's you know there's little decals paintings you know stuff that we can get in the awesome shop uh to to do make that make it even look more like a road but i don't have any of that stuff unlocked yet i gotta look at it and see what i actually want to get okay so we got the rails and the dividers in i think what i'm gonna do here is we're going to put the next floor's walls in at least along the road uh so you know, we have that in place, too. Um, so I have to figure out what those walls are. We know for sure that this one's going to be a corner wall. So let's go into here and go to walls. And um, we're going to put that in place. Now let's make it um, the concrete wall like that. And then what we'll do is we'll copy it. And uh, I guess we'll go, see, we went up five before, didn't we? So it might make sense to just stick with that clearance all the way up. Because I haven't decided for sure yet what, what <clears throat> excuse me, more, if I'm going to have a third floor in this factory or if we're going to build you know, our more advanced production lines in another location. I haven't decided that yet. So, uh, but we, you know, we definitely have two floors in this factory, so we might as well bring this up five uh, so that it matches the bottom floor there. If I had to do this over again, and I could do it over again, but it would be, it's not that simple because then I'd have to redo the hypertubes and everything else, but 
I don't like the fact that the road's like right up against the wall here. I feel like there should be something else here, but if I try and put a barrier there, it just embeds in the wall like that. Yeah, and yeah, I don't think that looks good. So in the future, when I make roads, I'm not gonna have them but right up against a building like this but you know it's it's the way that it is now and i think we're just gonna run with it since you know this is my first time doing this so <laughs> that's my excuse and you know the thing is that's that's cool even just for me is you know i'm learning right i'm i'm doing stuff my factory isn't as gorgeous or beautiful as as the pros and it, you know it no nobody should expect it to be in and, and especially myself because I'm new and I'm trying to figure it out, but you know, I, I love this game and I'm, I'll probably just keep playing it and we'll get better as time goes on. That's all there is to it. Okay. Anyway, we got that done. Um, do we want to look at, let's just go take a quick look in the awesome shop and um, you know what? Oh, wow. I also need, now that I think about it, I don't think I ever bought factory lights. Uh, let's grab our coupons. We've got a ton of coupons here. Coupon, coupon, tomato, tomato. Uh, we have 69, and there's another 20 already in there. In fact, we might as well grab those right now. Okay, so that gives us 89. Um, now, let's look in the shop here. So, uh, I think it's customizer. Yeah, it has all this stuff. So, transportation pattern icon. Oh, man, there's a lot of stuff here, isn't there? That's cool. Pathway patterns, cart path, pioneer path, straight path, solid line patterns. I like the sideline option like you'd see on a road, right? Factory icon patterns, zone patterns, dot, oh yeah, the dot well that would be more like for the center of the road right arrow patterns would be kind of neat and the number patterns all right let's do this let's get the um, let's get the solid line patterns um and i kind of like uh, and let's get the arrow patterns why are these five coupons and these are only one i don't know <laughs> that's a doesn't seem to make sense um yeah, let's get the arrow patterns. And I think that's all we'll do for that for right now. The other thing I wanted to do is go to organization. Uh, we want indoor lighting. I already got the street lights and floodlights. Do we want flood? I mean, I'm sure we do at some point. Ooh, nice. A floodlight tower. Yeah, let's, let's get those two. Let's get those two. Billboard set. No, I don't think we need any of that stuff. Let's look at architecture again. Structural beam pack. Those are kind of nice. Frame pillars. Structural frame set. Those are kind of neat, too. Oh, and this one has glass frame foundation. Ooh, I like that. Let's grab that, too. Uh, nah, I'm going to go okay with the concrete pillars for now. Don't want the industrial walkways. I, I like the ones we're using right now. Okay, so how much does that give us? Uh, 24. Yeah, let's get all that stuff. And then um, fix it specials. Yeah, those are all the statue things. Uh, let's do door walls. Steel framed window. Ooh, that's kind of nice too. Let's buy that. Okay, that's all for now. We're not going to buy anything else. Now, um, let's look. I know we're not, this uh, episode's not about decorating the base, but let's just take a quick sidestep here and um, ceiling lights. Let's put one of these in place. And we'll run it right down the center there. And those all have to be wired. See, this just this takes quick wire, copper, and rails. That's kind of expensive. Um, but let's do 
Oh, you can't run them in a... Oh. Well, here, let's, let's just see how much light that actually gives off. Um, whoops, keep hitting the wrong button here. We want to go to here, grab this. Well, that's, that's pretty good. I like that. Nice. Okay. Um, I won't leave it wired like that. I mean, I'll, I'll set it up with the wiring neat, but what I'm, what I'm going to do, and I'll probably just do this off camera because it's just going to be me placing a ton of lights and wiring them up. and It's going to take a long time. Uh, but I'll probably get all those in place uh, and have that be one of the off-camera projects. But that looks cool. Okay, we'll leave that the way it is for the moment. Now, let's go back up here. And um, I, I'm going to have to... I'm going to need to put a door... In fact, actually, now that we're talking about doorways, um, we should have a doorway there. It make, kind of makes sense, though, to have the doorway here um well i'll let me think about that later right now i'm just gonna put one in so walls automated gate i'm just gonna put one here for now and it takes it a second for it to actually work i don't know why just for now okay so what i want to look at here now is if we go into patterns and get the where is it at sideline uh, and we want to turn it this way oh we need a color cartridge for that oh hmm you know the thing about that though is it's gonna be so up against the rail you're gonna it's hardly gonna be noticeable it might subtly make things look better, though. Okay, so we need color cartridges to actually do this, and I never made those before. Let's see what it takes to make them manually, and I don't know how long they last. Color cartridge. Oh, flower petals. Oh, wow. Well, guess what? I've got two chests full of flower petals that I've been kind of sitting on. <laughs> um, yeah. Oh, no, that's not what I meant to do. How many color cartridges can we make from one thing of flower petals? A thousand? Wow. Okay. Let's make these up real quick. You know what? I just I just realized something. We're doing this the hard way. We're doing this the hard way. Let's grab ourselves a I think it's a, an assembler. Color cartridge. Oh, okay. Actually no, it, it should just be a constructor. Not an assembler, because it's only ne it only needs one thing. There we go. There we go. Okay. Um, we're getting smarter about things here. Okay, what we're gonna do is just put that there. Now this is this is just an another overflow chest. So I think what we'll do is let's just run a, a conveyor line into here. Oh, we're gonna have oh shoot, it's gonna be on the other side. Um Do I have room to grab all of this stuff? Damn near, huh? Here, let's put the coupons back.
and we want the input on this side. Is that centered? Yeah. Okay, and then we'll run a belt. Th this is temporary, of course. It's only going to be long enough to um, make turn all of those flower petals into colored cartridges. Okay, put that in there. Now, um, I need to just temporarily put that stuff in there. Let's grab all of these and all of these and put them all in here. Okay, is that everything for flowers? These are extra ores. Most of this stuff I should just throw in the um, in the sink. Okay, give me all that stuff back. There we go. Okay, so you're set up for color cartridges. Again, temper. It's this is all temporary, so we're just gonna power you up and make ourselves some color cartridges. Nice. Okay. Very cool. Okay, let's go back up now and. Uh, take a look at what we can do here. So if we go to if we go to center line. Oh, okay. Hmm. All right. What if we? Do a sideline. Like something like this. Mm, I don't know if I want one there. Uh, but then if we flip it around, then we have a center line right there. All right, that's cool. Um, cuz you know, I need we need room for the for the tractors to be able to start kind of maneuvering uh, after this point, so that's why I don't want to put another divider in this particular place. Uh, we'll put some arrows and stuff down too, but I don't think I want to do that until I get the truck station in place. Now, if we go back to what does the double line look like? Okay, so that would be useful if we didn't have the divider. Interesting. Okay. Um, what about the... You know what? Maybe I should have purchased the, the dashed lines too because what I'm thinking is putting those, you know, right down the middle. Maybe even instead of doing the sideline thing, I think that would look better. So yeah, let's um, let's go back down here. I know I can set up an awesome shop really quick, but I left the coupons down here. So let's grab those again. Whoops. Oh, I don't need any room. Um, but hey, we opened up some room in here. Oh boy. Okay, what do I have carrying that I don't need to be carrying right now? I mean, I kind of try and have a like a little of everything, but sometimes it's a gets to be excessive. We don't need that many stators. We don't need that many rotors. Uh, we're done with the silica altogether for now. I don't think we need encased industrial beams. We don't need that many frames. Um, maybe we could put a couple of those away and a couple of those away and several of those away and a few of those away. Okay, that's good enough. All right, so we want to go back to customizer, and I want to buy the the dotted lines. Okay, there we go. I'm assuming one color cartridge is 
consumed for every individual decal that you make. That, that seems logical to me. Okay, so let's go here. Uh, now we want the the dotted lines. Oh, you know what? I'll bet we just go here and then... No. Is it R? Okay, wait a second. How do we get to our dotted lines? I did just buy them, right? <laughs> uh, oh, here, here they are. Okay, they weren't showing up for some reason until I flipped out of the menu and came back into it. Okay, yeah, we want the center line, um, but we want this to be white. Center dotted line double dotted line. You know what would be cool is if we could do both sides at the same time, but I don't think we're going to be able to do that. Okay. Uh, so we want center dotted line. Now we want this to be a different color. So let's paint the first one and then go back into here uh, to colors and we just want this to be white. Customization already applied. Okay, how do I make this white? I think I'm actually already on that customization. There we go. Yeah, this is cool. Um, wait. Oh, do you, okay, hold on. You know what I think I'm going to have to do is paint it uh, or put the lines down and then come back through it again to change the color. Oh, that's going to suck. Okay, <laughs> well, that's what we got to do. Uh, well, yeah, hmm. There should be a way that I can say make this center dotted line white. Oh. It is white. Uh, no. No, it's not because I changed this tile to be white. Okay. Well, all right. If that's what we got to do, that's what we got to do. So I'm going to start running these lines um, down the road. And then... You know what, though? They, they're kind of close together, aren't they? I wish there was a an option where we could space them out a little bit more. I don't see how that how we could do that, though. Yeah, unfortunately, I don't think we're going to be able to do that. Okay, well, we'll just have to go with this then. All right, well, anyways, guys, I'll get this painted. I'll get the lines painted, and then the color changed to white, and when that's done, I'll bring you back, and then we'll go do the next thing.